The concept of how the layer system works in Photoshop is something we need to understand. Layers are not simple for us to get our heads around, but the effort to learn them is both essential and very rewarding. There are many skills in life that we find baffling for a while, and layers is probably one of those. Here we're going to try to shorten the learning of layers a bit by explaining the concept, because once we understand the concept of layers, any work we do that requires layers, which is quite a bit, will make a whole lot more sense. Now I wonder if it will help if we think of layers as a deck of playing cards. So what I've just done is to lay the Ace of Hearts on the bench in front of me. Yes, I know we're looking at this on a computer screen, but just imagine we've placed this on a bench. If I take another playing card and I lay that over the top, what we effectively have here is two layers. Because we're looking down onto the Four of Spades, we can't see the Ace of Hearts beneath but of course we know that the Ace of Hearts is still there. We're starting to already see the concept of Photoshop's layers. Now let me add a third playing card to the stack and of course what we now have is three layers in the stack but once again because we're looking down through the top and every card is solid then we can't see what's underneath but of course we know they're there we just need to move one of them to be able to see what we've got lying beneath. Well, I may as well finish off this little group by adding a fourth card. And now we've got four layers topped by the three of clubs. Now, when we see these images inside of Photoshop, looking into the layers palette, as we can see here, we can see that right at the top of the stack, over on the right, we can see the three of clubs. But we can equally see that underneath that, we have the ace of diamonds, the four of spades, and also the ace of hearts. Now, what we need to remember about the deck of cards that we're seeing here, and how we see them in the layers palette, is that we're always viewing what we can see in the layers palette from the top down. Now let's move on just a little bit and what we'll look at is a selected layer. So here we can see something a little different and let me explain what I've done. You can see that in the layers palette I've selected the topmost layer. We can see it's selected because we've got that blue-grey shading around the lettering three of clubs. That tells us that we've selected that layer for editing. If you look up and a little bit to the right, you'll see I've reduced the opacity of that layer to 50%. So what is happening here is we're looking through the three of clubs and we're seeing the ace of diamonds beneath. Now let's move on and select the Ace of Diamonds layer and do the same. Because now our picture is looking just a little bit more complex, but simply all we're doing is selecting the Ace of Diamonds layer and reducing the opacity of that. So now we're looking down through the Three of Clubs, seeing that partially opaque, the Ace of Diamonds and we can see right through to the Four of Spades and I guess you know where I'm going with this because we can do the same thing with the bottom layer and if we place 50% opacity in the layer slider at the top there when we drop that little box down a little slider control appears then we can see a little bit of absolutely every card we have in our layers stack. Now when we have layers or objects in a layered stack, we have quite a degree of control. We can move one or all of those layers in any way we wish. We can even take just one layer or many 
and rotate it, or resize that layer, or in fact edit that layer in any way we see fit. Color, density, anything we can think of. Now let's take a look at this using an image rather than graphics. Here I've got one image as a layer in Photoshop. What I can do because I can introduce other layers is I could introduce something else to this picture. Perhaps I could introduce a moon. But because the moon is sitting on its own layer and I can edit that independently, I can move the moon anywhere I like in the picture surface. Obviously it would be best placed in a compositionally strong position. But if I wanted to be really clever, I could even have the moon sinking below the trees. And if I was the sort of person to show off, we'd have the moon rising and maybe growing in size. Although I don't think that's entirely believable. But it gives you a good idea of how working in layers opens up so many possibilities to us. Now we don't only make composite images using layers. We also use layers to help us to balance the exposure in our images because it's quite common for us to need one exposure for the sky but possibly more exposure for the foreground as we can see here. What we can do then is use layers to be able to change one part of the image without impacting on the other part of the image and that can have a dramatic effect on the images we're producing. Now I've been using this image to demonstrate layers for many years and what we've got here is just a row of soldiers but it may not be quite as it first appears because when we're looking at a picture we're looking at a 2D picture and all we see are the eight soldiers standing in a row but in actual fact when we look at the layers palette we can see we've actually got eight different layers and one soldier is sitting on each of those layers which gives us a high degree of control over the picture we're putting together. By the way these were life-size wooden soldiers and I found them in San Francisco, saw the picture, took it, cut the soldier out and used it for this demonstration. But let's move on and let's select the first soldier in the stack. Now you can see I've got him selected and as he marches along the stack here you can see that the soldier marches in front of all the other soldiers because he's the one right at the top of the stack. And we can see that by the fact that the layer is highlighted. And if we chose the layer at the bottom of the stack and we got that soldier to do a similar little parade, what we'll find is he will march behind all of his soldier friends because he's at the bottom of the stack and all of the other images are piled up on top. Remember we're looking down from the top here. So we're looking down through clear pieces of glass only seeing one soldier on each of the layers. Now if we chose maybe soldier 5 somewhere about midway up the stack then we see something slightly different because if that soldier moves to the left then he's marching over the top of the four soldiers beneath him but when he marches the other way of course the other soldiers are above him so he appears to be behind them. It's all to do with the stacking order and that's something else that we can do with Photoshop. We can change the stacking order of any of those layers. So to help us understand the concept of layers, perhaps although we see the layers depicted in the layers palette as we can see on screen here, if we can think of the layers stacked up on top of one another a bit like a deck of playing cards, 
then it may help us to understand exactly how the layers works. But of course when we put all of the cards back into one stack we still have our four layers but now of course we cannot see them unless we look into the layers palette. So layers are the powerhouse of Photoshop, there's no doubt about that. We use layers for our everyday image editing to balance up the exposure in an image. We use layers as well in our creative work such as the one we showed you with the soldiers. But viewing the layers in the layers palette is not exactly how we need to think of them in our head and that's why I have suggested if we think of them as a deck of playing cards sitting on the bench and we're looking down through the top it may help to understand the concept because everything we do from now will be a lot easier once we achieve that.